Okay, hey, good, uh, good day, everyone. Uh, it's my end. It's, it's evening here. Yeah? Uh, hello, Trevin. Hello, Lucio. Hello, Safaras. Uh, okay, let me say Jamal. Am I, did I pronounce your names well? Am I audible? Oh, great, great, great. great. How about you, Lucio? Jamal, how are you guys doing? Good, good. Oh, great. Uh, oh, oh, good. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, would be we'll be going over the book, uh, Mastering Shiny. I would uh, share my screen. You're welcome to the Mastering Shiny book club. This is uh, a book by Hadley Weekham, and um, there's a there's an e-copy online. Uh, I believe we are part of this community because we want to learn together. So for this book, we actually be going through um, a chapter a week. And I think we have about um, 25 chapters. So say in the next um, 24 weeks, we should be done. Although this is just more of an introduction. And in this introduction, you we just want to get up and running on how the whole thing works and um, how we can be able to um, do well um, while we work together. And it'd be nice if we could make our time to ensure we like go through each of the chapters before coming to um, the book, um, the meeting. So we could have a very, very um, quality discussion and that will really go a long way. And um, there's nothing wrong in you going even a chapter ahead and come back, or let me say, go through the exercises. And so we can like life code and see, okay, this is what we need to like, what we need to get because um, there's a whole lot of complex apps out there. One of the reasons I'm actually going through this book is to be able to like um, understand how to understand the basics and be very good at it so I can be able to apply it even in you know, working on more complex apps, shiny apps out there. Um, I don't know if maybe anyone wants to talk about why they actually want to learn Mastering Shiny. Uh, let's just um, let's kind of make it interactive because if one person is talking, you might totally get bored in the long run. Or if there's there maybe a reason why you don't want to say something, oh, there's no problem. And I'll also check this chat session um, to, um, to understand uh, to get maybe any feedback from anybody who is um, using the um, the chat uh, chat section. Okay, nobody's okay. Trevin has muted. Oh, good. Yeah, I I've been using Shiny for a couple of years now, um, and I really want to go through this book to, especially in some of the later chapters to really understand some of the uh, more advanced um, aspects of Shiny. Okay. Um, yeah, like I only learned about like modularization earlier this year. So looking forward to expanding my depth of Shiny knowledge. Oh, that's beautiful. That'd be to Trevin. How about you, Jamal? Do you want to say something or you just want to use a chat uh, session? Oh, that would have been very, very beautiful. And um, Trevin, quick question. Do you have your um, GDOP set up um, for the book club? Oh, beautiful. How did you go about that? Uh, I have it set up and I, I have it set up for another book club, but I haven't downloaded this repo yet. Okay, okay, okay. Um, about downloading a repo, you could actually, um, do you use the use this package? Does it use this package for doing that? Do you know how to use that? Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Then maybe you could go ahead and do that later on. Um, I think um, Jamal just said, um, was introduced to Shiny a few weeks ago, so he wants to learn more. Okay, um, we're all here to, to actually learn. And um, to be honest, anyone here who has a um, vast experience or you have some level of experience, you could actually just, um, um, you could cut in during any of the book um, club. And even if you're not the one presenting and um, just um, drop your two cents knowledge so we could all um, share and glean from it. So um, I'm at the book club, um, part of the uh, book club meeting chapter now. I don't know if you can see that from your end. Everybody can see that, right? Okay, good. So um, one of the things, the point there says that um, each week a volunteer needs to present. I think I mentioned that the presentation will usually consist of a review of the material, a discussion. I think I mentioned that also. More information about how to present is on the GTOP repo. The presentation will be recorded, and that's what's currently going on, and will be posted on YouTube, on the YouTube channel. And um, um, this is just the preface, and um, this is just a breakdown of what the book is, is about. The book is actually in um, four, four parts, no, 
um, one, two, three, four, five, five parts. Um, the first part is just about you getting started. Right, the next part is about uh, shining action. Then the third part is um, mastering reactivity. And I think that's really the bulk of, um, of shine itself, although it's, that's really where the real work starts. Then best practices, then other topics. I won't really know how shiny works. That's why I am, um, yeah. So the first chapter would, is there any question? Anybody want to say something? You have a question or anything? Anybody? Okay, I think we have all the persons here. We have Novisa, we have Lucio, we have Christian. Oh, you guys, do you want to say something? Introduce yourself. That would have been amazing. Yeah, I can start. Uh, so okay. My is, yeah, my name is Lance Christian. Um, been using R for um, a couple of years now, um, mostly just kind of recreational, um, just kind of playing around with it and stuff. Um, I am a data analyst, but a lot of things I do are in SQL right now, um, but I love R and I'm kind of looking to hopefully do a little bit more of it in my work. But um, yeah, I've created a couple shiny apps and I think it's a really powerful tool. Oh, that's, that's, that's amazing. How about you, Lucio? You want to say something? Hey, hello, uh, I am an undergraduate. Uh, oh, I've beautiful. been using shiny for I think a couple of years now. Uh, I really like it because it, it allows for combining a bunch of languages, especially R and JavaScript. Oh, oh amazing, amazing. I uh, look forward to um, your presentation. I look forward to your presentation, Kristen. How about Novicia? Um, did I pronounce your name right? Or oh, Nako? Yeah, hi. Yeah, it's uh, close enough. Uh, close enough, OK. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, uh, I I joined because uh, I noticed a new cohort starting and it seemed like people were being late. So I just joined in to sort of say, hi, I'm not really sure that I will be regular in the meeting because it's, it's an awkward time for me. But uh, if you need any help with Shiny, you ping me in the, in the Slack. I have been using Shiny for, uh, yeah, I don't know how many years. Um, I've been also using a lot of, uh, 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 the package Golem. I don't know if you've heard of it. So if you want to build more complex shiny apps and make modules and stuff. Um, so yeah, um, that's it. Wow, it's been nice having you around. Uh, we do not to pronounce the name right now. Uh, yeah, don't worry so about much... it. Okay, it, so... Uh, this, the C so much pronounced ex... like a double Z in English, I guess, like... No, it almost sounds like pizza. It's like Novica. Novica. Okay, yeah. Novica. Don't worry, don't okay. worry about it, really. <laughs> okay, there's no problem. So um, it's been nice having you around if you could actually make it to the sport. Just like um, I think there's a whole lot of persons here with the experience. Like you've been using I'm Shiny for a while. For me, I just want to really like learn from other persons. I just happen to be fascinating, but that's just um, a title. But if you guys pick a chapter or two, it's be amazing learning from you guys also. So um, learn how to create a semi shiny app. That's what chapter one is about. To find the latest version of an app you can build, review different ways to start and stop the app, identify two co key components of every shiny app, understand how the two components are connected and observe how shiny apps react to user inputs. So um, um, introduction. Well, this is just the basic, um, the basic parts of every um, app. There's always the UI side and the server side. And, um, one of the reasons why it works this way is because there's something called reactive programming and um, Shiny automatically updates output when inputs, um, input change. Um, shiny outputs could be tables, charts, and automatically react when they are input change. So I believe everyone here have installed Shiny, but if you haven't, there's just a simple, um, you just have to write the code. And I know for us to be wanting to learn Shiny, we've actually been using R for a while now. And um, once you're able to install Shiny, then you could always check um, the package version you're using. I think um, this is currently 1.50. Um, the package I'm using is, uh, I think the latest package should be, just give me a couple of minutes, let me check. Okay, this is 1.7, it's 1.73. Okay, so, um, so to load Shiny, we just have to run this um, snippet of code here, library, 
uh, library parathensis then shining in a in a colon in a um, okay let's take all this again sorry somebody help me there uh, in a quotes yeah quotes yeah so uh, so the nice things about creating an app uh, to create a basic app you can like create a new directory for your app and that is quite easy so um, let's let me share my uh let me share my r studio so just one moment oh we have a new member lydia you're welcome oh hi Hello, Lydia. You're welcome to this course. Uh, we are learning Master in Shiny. And today happens to be our first day, and we're just going through the, the basics. Uh, and we're just introducing Chapter 1, which seems to be more of a... of, um, of just the basics of Shiny. Um, just trying to set up something. So do you mind telling us um, your experience with Shiny? Uh, do you, is this your first time, or have you been using Shiny before? have not really been using Shiny before. I'm like taking okay. a data visualization class, so I'm learning about it. But that's like, yeah, beyond the past two weeks, no real experience with it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, the next thing that ha will happen now is I would um, open a, I'll just open a project and um, just show the parts. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, so for the first part of the code that we just saw now, I was sharing my, the, the text that we'll be going through. Do you have your um, your repo set up already? The repo for this book club, do you have it set up? Do you have the copy of the book? Because we're going to chapter one now. And um, so first of all, to get in joining, you have to first um, get the, the, um, the package, load the package. And um, once you've done that, uh, you should get a call from your console telling you, oh, sorry, I think I should exit this now. Escape, okay. Uh, okay, I think I'm getting this warning because I've not um, up, uh, updated my R version. Uh, actually, we'll do that after the this session today. Um, so how do you, like I said, in a Shiny app, you actually have two parts. You have the UI side and also the server side. So for the UI side, the UI side is more like the, um, let me use um, like the front end side where the clients can actually um, react to, while the, um, the server side is like the back end side where um, you can put in your codes and all that, um, that's, that, um, where you can put your codes where you can react to it. You can get some um, information from, like, um, say you want to like um, plot a graph. Um, the code that contains the the graph outputs could be in your server. Why the um, the display part of the code would be on your in your UI side, as a front end side. And for this, we just build a basic shiny app. So for the UI side, there is always this. Um, let me just um, copy this part and drop it so that we would be able to cover more things. Uh, there's a UI side and there's a server side. There's a UI side, there's a server side. And um, we always have this field page. And the field page is like the, the, the they just say like a container having most of the, the things you want to do. And let's just put um, hello world, just as it's, in, uh, as it's in the um, text. And if we have hello world, we then have our server side. Let's see what happens also there. 
sorry. Okay. Um, function um, input output. Then we have to put the whole thing together. Shiny app, UI command server. Okay, so I think we should be able to run this now. Uh, run. Okay, okay. Um, can you see the outputs? Can we see the outputs? Um, or is it just me? Mm -hmm. Cannot see the output now. Okay, okay. I think it's because I'm sharing just one of my tabs. So I think I'll just stop sharing it and I'll share again. Um, just give me a couple of seconds to quickly get that done. Okay, stop sharing. Let me share my task screen then. Share my task screen. Um, And this. Okay, 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 okay. You shouldn't ask me. Show all windows. Okay, uh, sorry. You shouldn't push me over. So not to get in this now. Sorry, anybody wants to help? I seem not to find the button to share my task screen. I don't know why that's so. This screen too. Why is this not working? Okay, I think someone says something in the chat. Okay, hello. Yeah. Um, so, uh, coming, just having a bit of a challenge with sharing my screen now. So, I don't know why this is happening. Okay. 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 Screen. Okay. Yep, I think I can you see my screen now? Can you see the entire yep. thing? Yep. Everything, right? Yep. Oh, great, 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 great. Okay, so I'll just run the uh, run the app again and see what happens. Uh, okay. Um, because I've not saved, uh, can you see the output now? We have this hello world written here mm -hmm. and um, we could either make it uh, bigger or smaller. And one of the reasons why it's not, um, I don't have the run app um, button yet is because I've not saved the file. So once I save the file, I should, uh, should, should get, I should get the run app button. The run app button is live now, so if I, if you run the button, I'll just get, instead of me having to like highlight the whole thing, then run it. So um, let's move back to the book. Um, can you see my screen? Yep. Oh, good. So we've loaded Shiny. We've been able to like create our first um, UI um, side and server side. We've created a basic app. And um, we saw how we can actually just um, uh, make this load the app and see what the app looks like. So we'll go to the next, um, the next part of this chapter running and stopping the app. So we've written some code with, um, we want to, we started an app. We, what's the basic workflow? Let's talk about that. You can write some code, start the app, play with the app, write some more code, then you repeat. Most times you have to do this when you're working on a shiny, um, a shiny project. You might have to do one thing, then you pause, then maybe try something else. 
then you keep trying until you get the um, the exact um, information you you want. So um, running the app, there are a few ways you can run the app. You could use the run app button, which I think I demonstrated earlier. And if not, you could um, use this other, if not using R Studio, then you could use this other method. But I don't think anybody here is not using R Studio. If you're not using R Studio, can you just um, signify? Uh, if you don't use R Studio for Shiny, maybe you use VS Code, because I know, um, I think I've seen someone who uses VS Code directly and um, works, has the whole thing there. We still haven't figured out how to get that done yet, though. Does anybody, um, is there anybody who doesn't use um, R Studio? Okay, seems no one's saying anything yet. Okay, so um, whenever you run the, um, Whenever you run the, whenever you run the app, you get this um, console message listing on um, HTTP. Um, then you get this this um, let me say this code. It identifies your app in a local web browser, and um, this stand, this is like a standard address for that particular computer that is used for this example. The last four digits randomly assigned is a randomly assigned port number because it changes. You could have. You could have like two sessions open on your hours to do and you want to run two different shiny apps possibly maybe you're trying to contract something and um it should actually give you four this four digits which is your port number would be different um running a shiny app keeps our busy and you'll not be able to execute other commands in the console at the same time so if you want to do anything on the console you have to stop then um earlier on i had something on my console so, so i had to actually press the escape button to get out of it then um, to be able to do what I wanted to do, to run the um, app. So you could close Shiny app. To stop the app, you have to like click the stop button. It's the red button at the console side. And then, then you can move on to the next um, next thing you want to do. So let's go to the next part, which is adding UI controls. So I'll go back to R again. And then this time around, we are adding um, controls. And this time we're using the select inputs. And um, what we are asked to do here is very basic. Um, okay, so sorry, I have to change these so I can have. Okay, so okay, good. So um, this time around, we are actually going to create like some a basic um a shiny app that actually allows you select inputs and um. Do something amazing. So you could just have your select input, and your select input makes you pick um, something. Say for this particular example, we are picking from a certain data set, and in this data set, we want to ensure they have the label. And from there, we the label is actually data set, and the choices. Okay, so um, I think Lucia said he uses VS Code. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, possibly I'll ask you later on how you make how your setup works. So label data sets, um, label data set. So the label works as okay. This is actually a way to actually go about it. You can always come down here to like use the question mark button to check your the arguments in any function. See, we have select input. Now this would um, throughout um, certain um, with other arguments in that function and we we'll give you like a guide on what you need to do and you can easily find out more about it. Okay, the input ID. Hello, um, is everyone still here? Yes. I think everyone's still here, good. good. Yeah. Okay, good, good. So let me just put this back the way. I... Okay, good. So. If you use the um, question mark and select inputs, you get this um, argument. And these arguments, you could just easily go through them. And um, the input ID, we tell, the input ID is actually the data set we have here. So this is the input ID. Um, the input ID. And this is the label. And we have our choices. Choices is like, tells you um, where exactly am I choosing from? And the LS function, there's like, okay, we are choosing from this. Um, this array of um, data sets from the, the area of data set from that package function, package data set. So with that, we can be able to like pick each of the, any data set we want to like work on in that particular um, app. 
So let me just have that written here to quickly go to the next phase. All right. Let me just copy so we can be fast and move on. So we can cover chapter one. So when next we meet. Um, also, let's get to know before the end of this call who would like to volunteer to take chapter chapter two. And that will really go a long way. And um, even if there's a reason you might not be able to attend, um, maybe there's a reason of some sort you will not be able to, you will not be available and you've already volunteered to take a particular chapter, you just have to mention, I I think, is there anyone here, this is your first book club? Uh, I, I think we have had experience with other book clubs before. Is there anyone, is this, your, is, this a, is this anyone's first book club? If this is your first book club, just let me know. So, okay, is there someone saying something in the chat? Oh, no, it's not, okay, Lydia said no. Okay, I, I think, since nobody's saying anything, so this is not our first book club then, so. I think by the end of this uh, meeting, we'll have somebody who's going to volunteer and um, agree to, to take the next chapter. So the table output actually, table output actually, um, I'm, the, I'm in the advanced R book club right now. Oh, great, 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 great. That's amazing. I'm also, I just joined an advanced R book club, but that's amazing. Okay, good. Um, the table output, actually, this is what I was talking about earlier on, where you have, um, this is like a placeholder for a, a table, um, a code that actually will generate a table in the server side. So this actually is what brings it into the UI side. And that's really the, um, the whole um, where reactivity prog reactive programming takes place. So the flip page is just like a layout function set of visual structure of a page, the select input, um, this uh, is an input control that has users interact with um, the Shiny app. The verbatim text output shows code results while the table output um, displays table. Now, um, I think I've, I've already explained this um, earlier. Someone want to say something? I think I had something. Okay, that was, okay, I think that was just the feedback. So let me just go to the next, um, the next um, page. Okay, adding behavior, adding behavior. So um, it needs a, you need the server function to bring the output to life. That is one of the, um, that's what I, I think I mentioned that earlier. We have to program to test Shiny how to perform a function. And in this process, you can, in the Shiny, in the server side, you actually detect what you want to see in the UI side. So it's just like um, the backend side. I'm not a web developer, but, I think um, it's frequently used. But this is like you're actually building a web app. You, the server side, you actually would be able to um, iterate what you want, maybe um, a particular place, an input ID somewhere, what you want it to do for you. So um, the first one we'll be working with now will be the, um, the summary place that we have for the verbatim text output um, input. We would um, put in a code to make it oh actually we can only see your web browser if you're in oh. the, um, our studio we can't see it okay 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 i'm actually in our studio how do i do this the other time i was able to make everything come in when we have the server function we the server side we can actually just decide what we want to see there uh, and to do this, we have a function that makes that possible. And this function is um, each. This function is render, render. They could, there's render prints and there's render table. Now the render table works when you want to like render a table, and the render prints when you want to print, um, print say maybe a text or something you have already put in there. For this um, scenario, we are actually just printing in like the printing the data the um, the data sets from the data set package. And let's just run that and see what happens. No. Table. So whenever you have your, um, did I do that twice? Oh, I did it twice. Whenever you have your, um, 
whenever you to render something, you have to put it in a, you have to put a, um, the cursive bracket because without that, it won't see it. Because the render table serves also as a function. That's why we have to have the, um, the um, I think the coily braces. That's what they call it, the coily braces. Uh, we have to have the coily braces. Uh, so data sets get uh, impute. Impute, then you have to mention that impute. Now the impute is, um, it's telling us like the particular, uh, in the UI side, the, the, um, the piece of data is data set. So we have to like merge it with the impute so we can then decide, okay, what exactly we want it to do. Uh, then we have the, um, the package data sets and what we want to happen here. We want to get the summary. So summary. I actually have a question. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. What does the get function do? Oh, the get function actually would get us the, uh, sorry, does, let me check this quickly. I know it gets us the, it should get us, I think the, the search by name for an object or zero or more objects. So what does it, it search for each of the name of the object. Yeah, uh, it search for each of the name because since we have data set that what we want it to do, it will search for the name of each of the um, the data set in that package data set because the package data set contains several data sets. We could easily just check that to find out um, data sets. It's a package. Okay, I have to actually just check, check here. The data sets. Yeah, I could have just used the library function. Okay. Okay, so the data set package contains um, several packages the ability.cov, uh, cast package, chicken weight package, and many other packages like, I um, said package, sorry, um, data sets. And um, these data sets, uh, if you, let's just click on one of them, say um, the chicken weight. So chicken weight data sets. So let's let's do this data sets. Uh, chicken weight. Okay. okay. So the chicken weight data set um, is a data set having like um four variables and um. We could easily just check uh, weight, time, chick, and diet. So it has about four variables. And from there we can be able to say, like make a plot or something. But for this particular um, code here, it's just as a summary of that data set. So the get function just gets that particular name and makes the name available. So you could just, if you, any of the names you want to pick out of the, um, that data set, any of the um, data set you want to select out of that package, you'll be able to easily just pick it out. When we do that now, you're going to see it. So the get package just gets that name. Okay. So, and what's the, I see the first, uh, the first argument for the get uh, function is that input that you're getting from the select input. And then um, that second argument is that you're telling it where to get it from. Is that what you're doing? Yes. Okay. I missed the colon there. So let me add that. Okay. It's a package. So it's, it's saying, okay. I think I didn't get it spelling right. Package. Okay, good. It's since the data set package is a package, so it's telling it where to get it from. Yes, you, yes, it's telling where to get it from. Let's even go back to the get function and let's check what it says. Um, forget an object name given as a character symbol, um, the position or the environment, where to look for the object. So, where to look for the object is the second argument for the get function. So, this second argument is saying, okay, um, where to get it is in the package folder. In a package folder, look for data sets. So it picks data sets and brings it for our use. I don't okay. know. Does anybody have an, an, a, wants to add something? Please can go ahead. We are all learning. And, um, and um, anybody wants to add something? Um, Mr. Kristen, are you clear now? Is that clear? Kristen, yeah. are you clear? Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 So um, the next part is we would run the other um, set of code. Uh, outputs, outputs, 
uh, table. Table is a placeholder for the table we want to render. Render table is a function that makes that possible. Uh, render table. So we could just even scroll down to pick which of the functions you want to use. And I think I mentioned why we're using the um, coily braces because it's actually, it's a, the render table is, is more of a function. Uh, so what exactly do we want to do? Data set get uh, impute uh, data sets. Okay, I'm going to pull on again. Okay, so what we wanted to print, we wanted to give us data sets. So let's run this and see what happens. Hope we don't get an error. Okay, it works. Can you see the outputs? Oh, oh, no item code. Can anyone see the output, please? No. Uh, I got an error. Oh, no. Why this? Uh, let me I share again. I think the error might be coming. It should be render print instead of render table for your first. Oh, that's true. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'm reloading the app. Now I got another. Uh, it's saying there's no package, no item called package that's set on the search list. So. Uh, why am I not getting this screen? Okay. 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 Can you see uh, my screen now? Yes. Outputs. Yeah, the output says invalid first argument. So let's see what is wrong. Uh, you have a spelling error on line 16. Line 16. Yes, there's an S at the end. Uh, there's an S at the end. Data, data sets. 16 data sets. Data set, data set, data set. Uh, oh, package, package data sets. Uh, data set. Oh, 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 that's 11. Okay. Below that. Let's see what happens this time around. Uh, we still have another error. Uh, no item called package data sets. Uh, should this be because I have not? Although we have this first part out, we can actually select the select impute um, function actually works. Can everyone see the outputs? Uh, so I don't end up being the only ones in the output here. Okay, so I'm gonna say something in the chat. It should be package data sets. Okay, so it should be package data sets. Oh, 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 so oh, there is oh an S. okay, 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 okay. Uh, so sorry. I actually wanna avoid just copying the code. That's why, um, okay, okay. It's up and running this time around. We have everything, we have the table and we have the, um, the data in, can everyone see the outputs? Yep. Oh, great. So we have it, but we have an error saying invalid first arguments. Does anybody know why? I'm not seeing it right now. Can you go back to your code? Yes, I can see my code. Yes, back to my code. So I have a question. On oh, go ahead. line four, where input mm -hmm. ID, should that also be data sets? Oh, the input ID is, is the ID I would need to, okay, okay, okay. I think I see the reason why. I see the reason why. So I'm reloading the app now. There was an A missing in the impute data sets on line 11. So now there is no error. Oh yeah, yeah, Lucia, thank you. There's no error now, everything is perfect. And um, everything is perfect now. So we got our first app running and we have about 13 more minutes left for this class. So let me rush back to the book. And um, I guess you can all hey, see the book. Hey, Matthew. So, uh, hello, Trevin. Um, do you know what the difference is? I, I noticed the book has the session argument um, in the function call. 
and your code just had input and output. Do you know like what the difference is between putting session as an argument versus not? Oh, session. Okay, uh, that's a good one. That's a good question. Now, when you have session, possibly you're working on a very complex um, shiny app and um, you want to have um, different users use the shiny app sessions makes it possible i any other person have a, a much more um a more appropriate answer could go ahead and answer the question but this is what i i think i i learned from one of the meetings i i was on as you got shiny so this the session part is like it makes it possible for you to like um say you want to use this um namespace you want to use the ns to change change the user or something it makes it easier that way um, maybe somebody wants to say something about that, but I know the session, you can either use it if you we use it majorly when you're building very complex app, but because this is just a simple app, that's why I split it. I can put it back. You wouldn't even, it's when you wouldn't get to um, notice anything different, but because it's just a simple app, that's why I didn't include the session. Maybe somebody else wants to say something about session. Please go ahead. I was just going to say, um, I think that's probably the main reason why you include session. I think the, there's some other smaller cases, um, if you use um, the observe functions, so like observe and observe event, um, I've, at least um, when I've tested it out, it seems like those functions require the session to be called in that server function. Um, I couldn't give you a detailed reason as to why, but um, that's my experience. Yeah, those all those all make sense. Thank you. Back to the the book. We have like ten more minutes. So, is anyone volunteering to take uh, the next session? The next um the uh, okay, I'll be completing this chapter because we're not even done with it. Uh, so next week, we'll, if we don't finish this today, we might have to complete this. So I think I already mentioned the render function and um, why we use the coily braces in the render function. Um, let's just go to the next. next One step. thing that I kind of wanted to point out that I, um, so I'm a very basic user when it comes to um, Shiny, but I thought it was interesting. Um, every time when I was trouble testing or troubleshooting and um, I would have to stop the app, play with the code and then start the app again. Uh, and that just kind of took some time but um, I think what I liked in this chapter is that you actually don't have to do that. You can um, just um, have your app running and then change your code and then reload the app um, and then it'll show your changes. So you don't have to close and, re and reopen every time. Oh yeah, you could actually do that too. So. Um... The key part of reducing the um, application and showing do I don't repeat yourself. And that is where we would be having um, the reactive expression. And how exactly does the reactive expression work? Uh, if we go back to our code, we would find out that um, we have something being repeated. And um, we have line 11 and 16 being repeated. So there's a way we could go about it. And that is the, um, the reactive expression. And so in the server side, this time around, if you notice, so let me quickly go back and check something. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't include a session then. So I would have to include session now. And now it's a permission from my end. Um, back to this. So we'll be reading the reactive expression. So reactive expression is just one way you can um, have, say, a, a line of code that seems to be duplicated. You could easily just um, create a reactive expression. And instead of having to duplicate that code, you just call that same um, expression every time you need that particular um, line of code and you'll be able to get um, things done faster. So for this particular um, app, we have this particular code repeated. Um, is my Arrow Studio um, visible? I think so. Yes. Oh, great. great. 
So what exactly are we going to do this time around? We would um, create the data sets and data sets. Reactive. So we'll call reactive and we add a quality basis, which makes it a, a function. So we could just copy this. Yep. Okay. And we put that here. So each time we have a um, data set, it will bring this back and we'll be able to use it to um, get things, things done. So we can actually safely remove this now. And um, because it's a function due to the curly braces and um, what we've done and the reactive, because this reactive makes this a function, we just have to put the, um, the parentheses to say, okay, this is, a, um, this is a function on its own. And we can take this off also and do the same thing here. Okay, good. So we're going to reload the app, stop this app, then we can run the app again. Save selected. Okay. Can we all see the output? You see, we still get the same output, but this time around, we don't have to write the old um, code from, from scratch. Um, I think I was uh, thinking- We can okay. see the output. Oh, you can see the output. I thought I worked on this already. Okay, 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 okay. Why is this not speaking anymore? Okay. Can you see the output now? Yes. Oh, great. So we still have the same output and um, we're able to see everything. We can select any of the um, any of the data sets and do what we want to do with it. Okay. I think that's yes. So um to 1.7, we have just five minutes. I would have loved if we can finish this chapter before the end of today. Visualizing reactive expressions. So whenever we have a user input, then we have the reactive function that um, possibly has a code. Um, the user inputs the reactive function and the output change. So with the, um sorry. Let me quickly let me use this to explain. So in the user side, we have this input function that has the input ID, takes all the um, takes um, whatever wh whatever the um, the client side or whatever the person at the other side is is react is um, interacting with the app. You would um, click on certain things. It goes to the server side. Then when the input is generated, it comes out in the output side. So that's why if we go back to our, um, uh, our studio would find out that the UI side, whatever you um, let's go back to the app itself. Reload app. Um, can you see the out, app output? The yeah. outputs. Yeah. Okay, good. So whenever I click on this to select, I can select any of the data. And whenever I click on this, it's like I'm interacting with the input side. And when I click on something, it goes to the server side. Um, then what it passed back is this table and um, the summary here. And if we go back to our studio, we find out that the server side gives us um, both the, um, the summary and the table, which comes out as um, Babatin text outputs, which is the summary, and the table output, which is for table. But, but um, all, those is, all, the, all that is processed in the, um, the server side. And that's what has been um, expressed in this um, diagram here. Um, if nobody have any question about that, I would move to the next um, side and talk about the shiny resources. So there's several shiny resources, there's shiny cheat sheet. And um, if I click on it, you see what it looks like, where you, okay, I think I have to subscribe or something. But um, if you have access to that, you can easily just check the cheat sheet. I want us to complete this so that next time we'll go to the um, chapter two and someone can just, um, Volunteer. So we have several shiny resources. We have the shiny gallery. We have the shiny widget gallery. Shiny widget gallery. Uh, okay, good. What we did today using the um, select input, that's actually um, a widget. So there are other um, widgets in the widget gallery. You can make um, check out the work there. And um, the shiny gallery, I think, has a lot of inspiration and demos of specific UI components. 
And um, the UI components is the is those those things we saw in the, um, the UI side, like selecting pute and um, selecting pute precisely. Today we just deal with selecting pute. I think there are other um, are types of 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 that uh, of the UI component. And then we have the shiny dashboard, and this is a nice framework for creating good-looking and well-structured app with minimal effort. And um, the shiny dashboard is you have to use another package. I think shiny dashboard, um, the shiny dashboard. There's a shiny dashboard package for that, and there's a shiny dashboard plus package. I think by David Grandjohn. So there are many. Um, I don't know if you can see my screen. I just um, I'm at the gallery now, and then there are several examples of shiny apps that have been built by different people um, across the world, where you can. Um, um, do all sorts of things with, with, with shiny, amazing things with shiny. So on, on these notes, um, will be a, this is the last part of the um, chapter one. We have meeting videos. This is the first quote, the second quote, how they are their, their meetings. And um, it's been, I think it's been a nice time meeting all of you. Um, so next time we'll be meeting, I think we'll be going to chapter two. If anyone has any question, we are exactly on. I have just like a minute to go for today's um, session. So any question? I do have a question. So Please the previous ahead. book club I was in, we were completely building the notes. It was a GGPlot too. So since oh. this one already has notes, um, for the meetings, we're just kind of like demoing the actual, um, demoing the actual output versus like creating the notes. Or how would you say it's run? Um, if I get your question right, um, you for the GP, for the last book club you were, you guys had to like build the notes from scratch, right? Yeah, we were the first cohort. Oh, you were the first cohort. Okay, for this particular um, book club, there's been like three cohorts um, before us. I think four, um, if I'm not wrong. I think there's about yeah. No, three quarts, sorry, three quarts. So we are the fourth quart. And for us to be the fourth quart, there's already like resources available. So we could just add, if you feel there's a need to add, we could go ahead and add. So I think um, you just need to get, get um, pull the repo into your, um, your system and whatever you think you need to add, you could go ahead and add. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I guess you've done that or you know how to do that, right? You, you... Yeah, yeah. Oh, great, oh, great. Um, is there any other question? And who's volunteering to take chapter two, please? Lucio, Trevin, Jamal, Lydia, who's volunteering? Anybody? I can present. Oh, beautiful. So Trevin, you're volunteering to present chapter two. So we'll be seeing um, the amazing face of Trevin um, next week. Um, please feel free to like, um, I'm sure you, um, if you don't mind, you could actually show your video. Sorry, it's kind of dark here, like it's late in the evening. Let me say in the evening, not like late, late, late. So I want to say thank you for today's session. Thank you for coming around. And um, I look forward to learning more from you guys. I, I think there's a whole lot to learn. And um, thank you for your time. And um, it's nice meeting you. So from my end, I will say goodbye. Oh, Trevin. Thanks, yeah. Matthew. Lucio. Yeah, thank you too. Bye. Bye. Thank you.